Welcome back, everyone. I am Michael, your host for Depaganizing the Gospels. In this episode, I will be discussing the depaganization of Mark, chapters 14 through 16. This is the last episode for this part of the series, so it could run a little over. The next note is in chapter 14. Verse 21 says... The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. This verse is a quote from the book of Enoch. The pagan heretics used the plagiarizing technique of repeating things across the testimonies for their nefarious purposes without realizing they were also repeating statements of evidence against their own heretical conduct. The next note is about an omission in verse 22, which now says, While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. The statement, Take it, this is my body, has been omitted because it was fraudulent addition to the testimony. It is the heretical curse of Melchizedek to perform a satanic ritual of symbolically eating human flesh and blood. Jesus was not a pagan, and he was not the Son of God. Jesus would not have taught a pagan and satanic ritual of consuming bread and wine as though they were flesh and blood. The offspring of the fallen watchers ate the flesh and blood of human beings, and this is the true origin of this ritual. God destroyed the Nephilim because they were cannibalistic horrors on the earth. This information is in the book of Enoch, and the consumption of human flesh and blood as a ritual is a remembrance of those whom God destroyed for their evil and murderous oppression of mankind. The next note is about a correction of verse 24, which now says, This is the cup of my covenant for everlasting life with you, which is made available for many to partake, he said to them. The text now tells the true event of Christ offering his cup as a covenant, the same as in a traditional Galilean marriage proposal. And this metaphor appears with some additional details in other testimonies and in the revelations. The gesture was never a pagan ritual as it has been perverted to become by the pagan Catholics. The next note is about the omission of verses 51 and 52. If there was ever any doubt among those listening that this effort might be wrong, then how is the omission of a reference to a naked man in what is supposed to be the word of God, a wrong thing to do. Seriously, think about how obscene that is. The inclusion of a description of a naked young man has every purpose to be a curse upon the testimony. The detail has no relevance or purpose other than to propose that men ran around naked in Christ's presence. The addition of this detail was clearly a pagan curse supporting the insinuation of sexual immorality being attributed to Christ as an insult by the Antichrist. Pagan Romans were completely immoral, and the addition of this description had the intent to make them laugh because they were all well aware of the heresy they were committing when adding such inappropriate details into a testimony about Jesus Christ. The next note is about verse 61, which says, But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? The phrase was a variant having the same meaning as Son of God. Pagans attempted to be deceptive by utilizing a variety of unfamiliar epithets having the same meaning but not understandable to the simple-minded. Uneducated audiences of poorer class Romans and others being proselytized to believe in the pagan theology of the Antichrist. There is no precedent for this epithet anywhere else in the entire text of the Holy Bible. It is clearly a fabrication of paganism only appearing in this testimony. The next two notes are about verse 62, which has been corrected to say, I am whatever it is that you say, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One, and coming on the clouds of heaven. Jesus would not have agreed to their accusations, and his true response appears in Matthew's testimony. 
in humbleness and humility, Jesus would have submitted to their persecutions while continuing to refer to himself as the Son of Man. It was Christ's uncooperativeness that angered the high priest who wanted to convict Jesus of blasphemously proclaiming to be the Son of God. It was unacceptable for anyone to be the Son of God or to claim to be the Son of God, but it was not unacceptable for pagan Romans. Christ never said he was the Son of God because that was a blasphemy, then and it still is today. The curse has been removed in this depaganization of the testimony. The Mighty One is an epithet referring to God, and this name appears in the Book of Enoch. The prophecy Jesus is quoting appears in the Book of Enoch, the Epistle Jude, and the Revelations. The name clearly implies a singularity of God, and it disproves the Catholic theology of Holy Trinity. The next note is about chapter 15, verse 34, which has been corrected to say, And at the ninth hour Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, why hast thou let me to live, and yet thou hast delayed my salvation from me? The original translation of the Aramaic phrase was completely and intentionally inaccurate. The fraudulent editorialization had the intentional purpose to mischaracterize Jesus as having lost his faith. The text inaccurately refers to Psalms 22 verse 1 as the scripture Jesus is supposed to be citing. But translation of the Aramaic words into English are not aligned with the wording in Psalms 22 1. The intentional mistranslation by pagans had the purpose to discredit Jesus as faltering in his faith at the moment of his death. Jesus was not doubting his faith as proposed by the fraudulent editorialization and mistranslation. He was quoting scripture, knowing that he was going to live forever. Verses 38 through 39 have been omitted. The words of the centurion proclaiming surely this was the Son of God is a pagan editorialization, but it relevantly proves the case being made about how the demonically possessed and pagan Romans said that Jesus was the Son of God. The theology of Catholicism claims Jesus was the Son of God, and this concept was acceptable only in the pagan mythology of Romans. It was not and has never been acceptable for Jews to believe that a man was the Son of God. Anyone who believes a man was the Son of God is a Roman pagan and the Antichrist. The message of Christ has been perverted by paganization that began in the aftermath of his crucifixion. A Roman centurion was a pagan and saying the blasphemy would have been consistent for pagans and the demonically possessed. The insertion of the statement into the testimony has the intent to be misleading evidence to support the heretical editorialization throughout the testimonies. Pagan Romans accepted the Catholic theology that said Jesus was the Son of God because this concept was pagan Roman ideology. Pagans, heretics, and the demonically possessed called Jesus the Son of God, and it has been the Antichrist who has perverted the entire text of the New Testament with this fraud. The curse has been removed. There are only a few notes remaining for this episode, and they are all notes on chapter 16. The next one is about an omission in verse 14, which now says, Later Jesus appeared to the eleventh as they were eating. What has been omitted was the statement he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. It was a fraudulent editorialization that had the intent to characterize Jesus as being a harsh person who went around rebuking people for their lack of faith. But describing Jesus to be this type of person is clearly fraudulent. The next note is about a correction in verse 17, which now says, And these signs will accompany those who believe and accept the Holy Spirit. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues. The message of Christ was not completely lost in Mark's testimony, but the message of accepting the Holy Spirit is the most important part of his message. Receiving the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost was what Jesus was telling them about before he ascended. It is not heretical for, for Christ to say, in my name, because Jesus has become the Godhead. 
It has been the purpose of Jesus Christ to be the spiritual connection between humanity and Almighty God. While Jesus is not God, nor Son of God, He is the Godhead, the spiritual liaison between humanity and God. Jesus introduced mankind to the Holy Spirit, who is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus lives eternally within God's Holy Spirit, and His consciousness is eternal. This truth has been the message of Jesus Christ, and His message has never been that God is more than one person. Jesus lives forever in God's Holy Spirit, and His consciousness is our connection in prayer and other actions when we say our prayers or do these things in His name. The name of Jesus is not a magical power, and it must not be spoken in vain, because God is listening. The last note for this episode and discussion of Mark's testimony is about an omission in verse 18, which now says, They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. The statement, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all, is a fraudulent editorialization, having the intent to portray the gifts of God's Holy Spirit to be sorcery or magic, This falsification has misled many people to do some really stupid things and die because of it. The truth is that Jesus never said this statement. Well, that concludes the discussion of the depaganization of Mark. Be sure to subscribe to get notifications of the releases for the next part of this series. I will be depaganizing the testimony of Luke. Thank you for listening. I am Michael.